So it is Friday, which means it is my weekly championship score predictions. It's match day 28. As always, I'm going to leave this weekend's fixtures in the description down below. So that you can pause the video and leave as many championship score predictions as you like. The same structure works. You try and make as many score predictions as you like. If you get one right, your comment will be included. I'll give you a shout out as well. And the one that gets the most correct predictions will have the link to their channel shown in the video. So that is what's on offer. Also, you'll be in Alexa's Hall of Fame as well. I need to change it because there's so many members in it now. I wanted to release a video yesterday on the transfer show because a lot of transfer business has happened on Wednesday and when I uploaded my last transfer show. But starting from the, when I uploaded that transfer show on the Tuesday, I was dealing with a matter and it's still bothering me now. So that's why I've not been as active as I was this week and I was then last week. I know, I know you apologise on that and I hope you'd understand. I said I wasn't going to miss doing an episode of the school prediction, which is why you're getting one. But as always, if you like what you see, please make sure you do give this video a like. It is massively appreciated. Please share the channel to as many championship fans as you can and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done or if you're new around here. All of that would be tremendously appreciated. But without any further ado, let's move on from the negatives and let's move on with the positives and move on to some fantastic games we've got this week. I mean, I'm glad we've got everyone playing this weekend from this weekend onwards. We've got a weird system going on. I don't know if it's because of it's a winter break or something. We've got two games playing on Tuesday and two games playing on Wednesday. And then we've got like five or six games playing on the next Friday or Saturday. It's a really odd system, but we've got Friday's game of Fulham and Middlesbrough, and I think this game is going to be quite close. Obviously, Fulham are not going to have Alexander Mitrovic in their squad. For what I've heard, he could be out for two to three weeks. Actually, not as bad as I thought it could have been. I thought he could have been out for a month or maybe even two months if the ankle injury was really bad. But it looks like he's out for a couple of weeks, which might not hurt Fulham too much. And it looks like they have got options like Bobby Reed that they can put up front as well. Maybe going for a striker in the transfer window may not harm them a little bit. As with Middlesbrough, they could have a little bit of fatigue. They played on Tuesday night, losing out to Spurs. They were quite unlucky to have that defeat, actually. They were 2-0 up with Nacelso and Lamella scoring the goals. But they did kind of well to make a nervy finish for Tottenham. Arguably, they should not have made it as hard as they did. But Middlesbrough, I think, did quite well in the second half to try and compete with Tottenham. And they weren't blown away as well. And I think Jonathan Woodgate, once again, had a pretty good game plan on how to go on for the game. Maybe not the first half, but the second half. He really got it nailed down. Although I don't think fatigue may play into this game with Middlesbrough being away from home. I still think that they can really give Fulham a game because I think Fulham, with the injuries that they do have, they're not going to pull out a complete full squad. And without Mitrovic, who's scored 18 goals, most goals this season, it's just not going to be the same. I'm expecting a couple of goals in this game. Fulham's last eight home games have been over two goals scored. So I'm expecting that there's going to be quite an entertaining game. Even though the last encounter was a very disappointing 0-0 draw. I remember the game, Rodak got sent off very quickly for Fulham. And Middlesbrough, unfortunately, at that time were low in confidence and couldn't capitalise with Fulham being down for 10 men for most of the game. I think this Middlesbrough side is different now. I think they can go forward with confidence. Their new signings, I think, will add a new layer of depth and confidence. But having said that, Fulham at Craven Cottage will not be easy. They have come unstuck a couple of times at Craven Cottage. I'm going to predict that there will be goals and say it will be a 2-2 draw. But it could really go either way because Fulham are strong. Middlesbrough can be strong on their day and they've got a strong form to back that up as well. And Fulham, overall, for the better squad, I think they can literally beat anyone. Fulham will go for this game, but I think Middlesbrough will be strong enough to hold them out. So I'll say a 2-2 draw. So next up, we've got Queen's Park Rangers versus Leeds United. And this game really sticks out to me last year because this was the beginning of Leeds United starting to crumble their promotion chances. Queen's Park Rangers at that time last year were in a really torrid run of form under Steve McLaren. And this was their only win in the start of 2019 until they sacked him and they got a new manager or caretaker manager. I don't know, they were running out of ideas in this time. And I think it was showed in their last game against Sheffield Wednesday when they piled forward and had all their chances, all their possession, and they just couldn't punch through the defence. They got frustrated and got run, and ran out of ideas and they can't do that against Queen's Park Rangers because... At home, they've scored 11 goals in their past two games. They look like they're on fire at home at the moment. But having said that, they did have a really bad defeat against Brentford last week. Their London rivals, of course, losing 3-1. And defensively in the first half, they were really poor. The BMW in front really made light work and barely needed to go out to second gear to punch it through the defence. Cameron, who I admire his work rate, he was put out of positions a couple of times. Manning wasn't great either. They're going to have to step up against Leeds because despite being away from home, I think Leeds do have a better away record than their home record so far this season. I mean, would you believe it that Queen's Park Rangers have actually scored more goals than Leeds United so far this season? And they're 13 places lower than them. So 
scoring goals has been Leeds' problem. And it's looking like that Leeds are not going to get Che Adams, who I did note down in my last transfer video that they are linked with him. It sounds like Southampton are not going to sell him, which could be a blow for Leeds because I think they do, they are light up top. And I think Marcelo Bielsa has specifically mentioned that. With Queen's Park Rangers, it'll be very interesting if they do get Jack Clark. I'm really struggling to call this game. I could see this game going either way. I could see Leeds probably scoring an early goal and being quite comfortable. But if Queen's Park Rangers score first, I think Queen's Park Rangers could really hold on. I'm going to say Queen's Park Rangers will win and it'll be a 2-1 home victory. I'm calling it. I'm calling that Lightning will strike twice and Leeds will lose to Queen's Park Rangers. Like I see this being a very fiery encounter and I'm really excited to see the outcome of this game. So I'll say 2-1 QPR. It can go either way. Brentford, they have to play Huddersfield this weekend. Huddersfield have been a side that have had been unstuck a couple of times. Not in the best run of form. They've lost two games in a row now. And both of these games, they didn't really show up and give any sort of fight back. Their recent loss was against Barnsley, of course, their Yorkshire rivals. And it was a game that in the second half, they didn't really compete until Lewis O'Brien had to score a wonder goal to almost bring a little bit of life and hope back to Huddersfield. They've got to do that from the first whistle, Huddersfield, if they want to stand any chance against a Brentford side that are high in confidence, in terrific run of form, Four wins of their last six. They're going to be eager to try and get as many points as they can, knowing that the top two are dropping so many points right now. But following their head-to-head -head record, Huddersfield and Brentford, it's been even. It is three wins for Huddersfield and three wins for Brentford in their last six meetings. We don't tend to get any draws in this game. Huddersfield have actually won their last two meetings against Brentford. And of course, Huddersfield actually managed to beat Brentford at Griffin Park in the reverse fixture. It was... One of the anomalies in Brentford regaining their form, but Danny Cowley doing an absolute miracle worker trying to get Huddersfield some points. That's kind of rubbed off a little bit, and I'm going to say that will happen in this game. I think Brentford right now are just going to be unstoppable for a team like Huddersfield to try and put them out of their way. I'm going to go for quite a high scoring and a very convincing 4-0 away victory. Not a nice score like for Huddersfield's fans' perspective, but that's just how I feel. BMW right in front are on fire. Everyone's confident. Jensen's playing well. Jansen's good defensively. Reyes doing very well in goal. The whole team right now is probably the most complete squad I've seen in the championship right now. And I can't see anything stopping it as of now. So... That's why I'm going to go with a very convincing 4-0 away victory, but who knows, that could seriously backfire on me with Huddersfield gaining a shock win. They did do that last time, let's see if they can do it again. Now, Swansea playing Wigan. Latest news coming out of Swansea, it looks like they have managed to gain Conor Gallagher from Chelsea. That is going to be a fantastic bit of business. I would say Swansea have had the best January transfer window as of now. Managing to get Gouaye, who's a very good defender. Managing to get Rian Brewster up front, who's a highly rated young attacker and getting Conor Gallagher. Swansea have had the best January transfer window as of now. It's just about halfway through. Who knows what, what Swansea could do, but they've done their business very early on and they've done it well, I think. I think with Steve Cooper in charge as well, I think he's had a great influence now with all three of them being young English players. I think they've looked at Steve Cooper manager of the under 18s England squad. They've looked to him and with him previously working for them, I think Steve Cooper could really achieve something with this. And it'll really hurt Charlton, who I'll later predict, but it could really help Swansea. I think he is exactly what they need in terms of trying to push players forward. Now moving on to Wigan. They've only two defeats in their last six, but only one win in their last six as well. Not great for Wigan. And last time they played each other, Swansea narrowly got a 2-1 away victory. I do remember this game. I think if I remember right, it was 1-1, but then Swansea scored in the last minute of the game. It was heartbreak. And Wigan's season was identified by just conceding very late goals. They do have a terrible habit of conceding goals in the 90th minute. I just have an instinct that Swansea are gonna be very, very attacking, but I think Wigan will try and soak that pressure up and try and hit them on the break as well. Because Wigan lately, despite not winning many times, they, there have been promising times that they've looked quite good, especially on the counter attack. But having said that, I don't know how they're going to cope with Swansea's new signings. I'm going to go for a high scoring game. I'm going to say Swansea will win by three goals to two. I'm going to say Wigan may take a shot lead. But I say Swansea are going to have enough grit to make it 3-2. I don't know. It's just an instinct. But this could be easily be a nil-nil draw as well. So 
Very interesting game, I think. Now we have Sheffield Wednesday going against Blackburn Rovers. I think this will be quite a close game, to be honest with you. Sheffield Wednesday had a fantastic away win against Leeds United, previously having a great away win against Brighton as well. Two great away performances. At home, we're going to have to wait and see how they respond with their home performance at Hillsborough. Blackburn have been quite an inconsistent run of form. And to be honest, so Sheffield Wednesday, previously losing three games in a row before they actually managed to beat Leeds by two goals to nil. I'll be interested to see how quickly Charlie Mulgrew goes back to the Blackburn squad. Even though he didn't really play that much with Wigan, he was quite an integral part to Blackburn's League One winning squad. And it'll be interesting for me to see if he'll be a great option for defensive reinforcements. Last time we had this game, it was a 2-1 home victory to Blackburn. And I'm seeing quite a similar pattern of it being a very tight and quiet cagey game. I don't think there'll be as many goals. If they can soak up as much pressure as they did against Leeds United and be as punishing and as ruthless as they were, Blackburn could have a very difficult game. I've really struggled to call this game. I could see a reason why both these sides will win. So I've made my decision that I'm going to say it'll be a draw. I think it'll be a 1-1 draw. You tend to get more goals from that in this game, actually. In fact, funny stuff for you. Sheffield Wednesday has seen more than three goals in their last eight home matches. So, quite a bold shout by me, but I just have a feeling that Blackburn may be quite defensively tight. I think Sheffield Wednesday will be the same as well. And I think it'll be an overall matching of quality that this will be a draw. But let me know what you think in the comments. Now we have Preston going against Charlton. Obviously, the biggest news coming out of Charlton, they have lost Connor Gallagher. And what's even worse for them is that they've lost him to a championship rival in Swansea City. And it was a bit bad of how the situation go about. Chelsea said that they would keep Conor Gallagher for the whole season. Chelsea recalled him. But now, what makes no sense to me, Chelsea are not going to use him. They're now going to loan him back to Swansea. I don't know if it's a golf and quality. I, I honestly have no idea. A really odd decision by my club there. Preston have a very strong record against this Charlton side. And I think I will expect to see Scott Sinclair play for this game. I could really see him being quite an important member in terms of trying to get Preston up higher in the table. I mean, they're 10th place right now, but following the start they had, they really should be finishing higher. It's been their home record why they're this high up the table, but recently they have lost their last two home games. So maybe it's bad signs for them, but they've got a pretty strong record against Charlton anyway. So I don't think they're going to struggle too much. I'll be interested to see if Andre Green plays. And I think more transfer news coming from Charlton. Obviously, I did mention that they had a bid accepted for Marcus Madison. I don't know when Charlton will confirm it. I think they will confirm it quite soon. Having said that, I think this game's going to be a very similar game to how it was at the Valley. Preston managed to grind out a 1-0 away victory, which was huge for them following their poor away record and Charlton being quite strong in the Valley. And as I said, I think this game will be quite similar. I think Charlton will put Pre Preston under pressure and following the pressure that Preston have having flaws in their home record recently. I think they know deep down they need to win somehow. And I think eventually, probably a penalty with Preston North End getting the most penalties, almost called them penalty North End there. <laughs> That's probably a fitting name for them right now. But having said that, I think that will be the difference. And I think Preston will win by one goal to nil. It'll be very, very close though, because I Charlton can surprise some people they had a great performance against West Brom I think they'll offer that same intensity but I think without Conor Gallagher there's going to be so much quality now gone from that squad from how thin it was already it could not be a worse situation for Charlton right now and their new owners need to get some more players in we have Millwall going up against Reading both of these sides in fantastic runs of form and in terms of head to head there's very little to separate these sides with both these sides having three wins of their last six meetings against each other the reverse fixture was a 2-1 home victory for reading you know maybe we'll see a similar fate happen although reading could show a little bit of fatigue they did play midweek against blackpool they dealt with them quite comfortably in the end game a 2-0 away victory their reward for that is that they've got to play cardiff with a home game at the Medeski. So not the worst scenario for Reading moving forward in the FA Cup. As with Millwall, they had a draw against Stoke. A pretty below par performance from them because I say Stoke were slightly better. Well, I think at the Den, Millwall will be really up for this game. But Reading are in a fantastic run of form, as I did say. They've not lost in over seven games now. So it's going to be very difficult for Millwall to try and break their undefeated streak. Really going back and forth on this one. This is really tough. This is the toughest one so far. I really can't call it. 
I'm going to therefore say that this will be a 1-1 draw and the safest option. They both had a draw last weekend, so maybe they'll have a drawing streak go on and they'll go on two draws on the run. So I'll say it'll be a 1-1 draw. I can't call this game. Now we have Derby going against Hull. Now I do briefly remember this game in the reverse fixture. It was a game low on quality, but... Hull's wings were the difference with Jared Bowen getting a brace and Kemal Grzycki getting a brace of assists. So they really ultimately decided the game. And it's kind of been like that for Hull's whole season, to be honest with you. And I think two players that Hull desperately need to try and keep if they want to have a legitimate push next season, if they don't get to the playoffs as of now. With Derby, they've shown more promising signs that they are probably going to start climbing up the table a little bit. They're undefeated in their last four games, showing some more encouraging performances. It's not fixed yet. I'd say in the midfield, they still cheaply give the ball away, but there's a higher press right now. They're scoring more goals. And I think having Wayne Rooney in an advanced number nine position it's going to be very, very good for Derby. It's going to invite the likes of Waghorn, Marriott, Bogle with more chances and opportunity. If there's any team that will punish you for giving the ball away, it'll be Hull with their fast players going on the counter-attack. Probably the best counter-attacking side in the whole championship with Grzycki and Bowen on the wings. Only five points separate these sides, which is actually quite surprising for me. And they're six places apart in the table as well, which is even more surprising to me. Hull, of course, actually lost their last game against Fulham, which I did correctly call, with Hull being a very inconsistent side. However, Derby have a very strong home record, but it is in Hull's nature to have a really shocking game and to have a shocking game last weekend, but have a fantastic game this weekend. And you know what I'm going to call that? I'm going to say Hull are going to get a 3-1 away victory. I can truly see that. I think Hull's players will be on point in this game. And Derby, maybe they'll play around the same, give the ball away a couple of times and they'll be on them. And despite with Derby's strong home record, with the positive influence Wayne Rooney has had, it's still not perfect. And I think with Hull, the strategy I'm just going to go with is that if you lose the last weekend, they just tend to win the next game. So I'm going with that and pretty convincingly as well, I'm going to say Hull will do the double over Derby this season and they'll get a 3-1 away victory. Now Bristol City going against Barnsley. If you want to see a fixture that has goals in, this is the fixture to go to because Bristol City have scored at least two goals in their last 10 home matches against Barnsley. So we are very likely to see some goals in this game, which I'm really excited about. Bristol City have been quite inconsistent. They did have a losing streak of three defeats, but they have won two of their last three games. So maybe Lee Johnson started to get a bit of stability. Bristol City have recently lost Rodri, and I think the biggest news coming out of Bristol City is that finding out they're not going to get Eddie and Ketia. He's going to stay at Arsenal, which surprises me. And I think the red card of Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang has actually had a big influence on that. I don't think Arteta would want to admit that, but I think it has had an influence on it because I think now they know with Lacazette gaining interest from Atletico Madrid, I think they know that with that risk, they cannot be light up top. So I think that's why they've had to keep him Ketia. With Barnsley, they had a good win against Huddersfield. I say they're really good for the first 70 minutes. Dropped off a little bit and allowed Huddersfield to get back into it. However, overall, I'd say they were really good. And I think Gareth Struber tactically has set Barnsley up to be a lot better and defensively better as well. However, Bristol City are a side full of quality. Some of their players have developed interest from Premier League clubs, most notably Josh Brownhill. I think he'll be all right for this game. I think he'll be able to brush those interests aside and play at this game at his best. I've just got a feeling that Barnsley may win this game. Barnsley have not beaten Bristol City in their last six meetings. So for me to call Barnsley to win this game would be a huge ask, especially as they did lose their last away game against Derby. I'm going to say that there'll be many goals in this game. I'm going to say that. I'm going to say Bristol City will score two, but I think it'll be a 2-3 away victory to Barnsley. It will be a fantastic game for the neutral if it does happen, but Jacob Brown's in fantastic form. Connor Chaplin's in great form. That whole squad just are playing so much better. They're playing at a better tempo. Their passing's gone better as well. They're more clinical. They're more ruthless going forward now. They can score more goals. And I'll say that Barnsley get a 3 2 away victory. But it will be a very, very good game if that does turn up to be the case. But I could also see Bristol City win this game. It's very tight. So now we have Birmingham going against Cardiff. The reverse fixture was a very dramatic game with having two red cards and one player from each side getting sent off. And Cardiff just about gained a 4-2 home victory. But I do remember this game. It 
the momentum shifted between both of the teams. Birmingham starting off very, very strong and actually scoring very early on. I think it was Jukovic who scored very early on. But Cardiff somehow managed to turn it around and it was when Neil Warnock was under pressure. It was ultimately a very dramatic game with two red cards. I can't quite see the same happening. A great stat for Birmingham's perspective is that Birmingham have kept a clean sheet against Cardiff at home in their last four home matches. However, I don't quite see that being the case. I think Cardiff are a different side under Neil Harris, but I don't think they'll be that they're strong as they're going to be fatigued. They had to play out a very dramatic 4-3 away victory against Carlisle. It was an unbelievable game. Aidan Flint being the main hero, managing to get a brace for Cardiff. It was a nervous moment with Carlisle taking an early lead early on. However, I think Cardiff did well to regroup, recover from it. They were going to avoid the embarrassment of losing to a League 2 side, even though Carlisle really gave Cardiff a really good fight there. They managed to grind through and get a result, and they've now got to face Reading, who themselves also had to play a replay. However, Birmingham have lost their last four games of the championship as well, so that's why I don't think they'll keep a clean sheet. However, having said that, I think if you balance of what's gone on, their forms right now, Cardiff and Birmingham are not in a very strong run of form, both having one win in their last six games, which is not great. I'm going to say it'll be a draw, and I'm going to say 1-1 one, one draw again. I don't think there'll be many goals in this game. I don't think it'll be as entertaining as it was in the Cardiff City Stadium last time. But it'll be a very close game. So I'm going to say a 1-1 one, one draw. So our penultimate game is Sunday's game with Nottingham Forest going against Luton Town. Well, Luton have the poorest away record so far, losing their nine away games in a row now. So they're not going to be in good odds in this game. Nottingham Forest, one of the favourites, I'd say, to make a push for promotion. They also do have a game of hand with all the sides in the playoffs currently, which if they do beat Reading, which is their game in hand, they could really capitalise on it. Strangely enough, in the last four meetings, Luton have won twice and Nottingham Forest have won twice as well. However, Luton have not beaten Nottingham Forest since 2007, when they were back down in League One at the time, which is quite remarkable. Both these sides' transfer business has been quite quiet, with Nottingham Forest being linked with a couple of high-profile players, but not necessarily getting them over the line yet. There could be a few outgoings. Luton, I think there could be a few outgoings as well. I've not really seen them have many interests either. I do think Nottingham Forest may not take this game by the scruff of the neck. I think they'll be quite reserved. So I'm going to say there won't be many goals. I'm even tempted to say a nil-nil draw. But for me, with Luton's very poor radio record, I'm going to narrowly edge Nottingham Forest with a one-nil home victory. But it's definitely an intriguing game regardless. And for our final game, we have West Brom going against Stoke City. Would you believe it that Stoke have actually won more games than West Brom have in their last six games? You wouldn't believe it. They are over 20 places lower and Stoke have won more games than West Brom have in their last six games. It just goes to show you how many points the top two sides are dropping. They're literally opening the door with other sides to enter the race. I don't know if it's their strong form just fading away or something or if it's the pressure mounting on them. It probably is, to be honest with you. But Slavin Bilic has made an intent. He wants to make some signings in this window. I think they have confirmed that Olsen will be joining West Brom. Orsic remains a target. Not sure whether they'll get him. Dwight Gale is another name I've heard, but he's been injured recently with Newcastle playing against Wolves last weekend. So I don't know. I don't mean I think that deal may be quite unlikely. But he was lethal last year in the championship, being the top goal scorer. He'll be a very welcome return for West Brom fans. In reverse fixture, it was a 2-0 away victory to West Brom, and the gulf between the two sides at the time was really embarrassing, quite cringy to watch actually because both these sides were in the Premier League and relegated from the Premier League in the same time. But the difference in quality was really, really bad for them. With, obviously, with Hal robson Kalner scoring the penalty and Matt Phillips managing to score the other goal, Dean Garner providing great assist in that game. I believe Stoke didn't even have a shot on target in this game either, so they really did struggle. However, Stoke has shown promising signs under on Martin O'Neill. As I said, they actually won more games than West Brom have in their last six games. But... They're not doing a very consistent fashion, which is why they are just about barely above the relegation zone in 21st right now. I am so tempted to say that Stoke will get a surprise away victory. But part of me thinks West Brom can't keep this up. Slavon Bilic knows that they can't keep this up. I'm going to narrowly edge West Brom to have a 2-1 home victory with Charlie Austin being the difference. That is my prediction. I think he will be brought on and West Brom will be lacking ideas. Stoke will be quite resolute defensively, but then... 
he'll come round, win a header or something, and then he'll get last minute winner or something. That's what I envision. So I'm going to say West Brom get a 2-1 home victory. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is what the championship table would look like if all of my predictions came true. Some very interesting changes for some teams if they do come true by the way so i think that wraps it up for this video thank you guys so much for watching if you liked what you see and want to see more championship content please make sure you do give this video a like it's massively appreciated share the channel to as many championship fans as you can and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done or if you're new out here all about what really made my day thank you guys so much for watching you guys are legendary if you saw the end of this video and as always take care